Welcome to this video 8 about Sears Resonance Resistor and Doctor Capacitor Circuits. Here we see a Sears Resonance Circuit. It's consisting of an inductor, a resistor, and a capacitor. And they are sitting in series compared to the source. We take out of the circuit over the resistor. Um, these circuits form the basis for filters that have better performance in passing desired signals and rejecting undesired signals that are relatively close in frequency than the first order filters. So, in essence, these filters are more selective than the first order filters. They can narrow out a specific range of frequencies that the first order filter can't do. So, here we have the series resonance circuit again. And if we want to find the impedance that the source look into between these two um, circuit pins, we see that the first thing we meet is the inductor impedance we have here. Then we meet the resistor, R, and then we meet the capacitor impedance up here. Then we have uh, an expression called the resonance frequency, F0. It's defined by 1 over 2p and the square root of the inductor and the capacitor. It's defined as the frequency which the impedance is purely resistive. The total reactance is zero. Reactance is the impedance of the inductor and the capacitor because they are purely imaginary due to the J. So, the 2p times F0 times L actually equals 1 over 2p F0 times C. And the uh, resonance frequency equation. We also have an expression called the quality factor. And that's the relationship between the impedance of the inductor compared to the a resistor. So this impedance compared to the resistor. That's the quality factor for a series resonance circuit. That's QS. We can also um, express the quality factor based on the impedance from the capacitor and the resistor. Then it's 1 over 2p, the resonance frequency C and R. If we uh, imply the quality factor in this equation and move the resistor value outside, we get another expression for the total impedance looking into the circuit as 1 plus j, the quality factor, and then the running frequency over the resonance frequency minus the resonant frequency over the running frequency. By running frequency, I mean the frequency you want to investigate the circuit at. So it could be any frequency that's not the resonance frequency. It could also be the resonance frequency, but then this just cancels out. And we only get R. When we look to the resonance circuits again, based on the magnitude and the phase, we have to take into consideration this is a normalized magnitude and phase. We normalize it to the resonance frequency. So here at 1 means that the running frequency, that could be any value, is actually 
the same as the resonance frequency. So here we have the resonance frequency and the running frequency the same. The quality factors we can see here is one that has 100, 50, 20 and 10. And as you can see, the greater the Q becomes the, uh, the quality factor, the more distinguished is the relationship between the magnitude of the impedance we see into compared to the resistor. So it's a more selective. The higher the Q, the more distinguished it is compared to a smaller band of frequency. We can also see that um, based on the phase at lower frequencies, the circuit looks like more capacitor because we have minus 90 phase shift. And when we enter the resonance frequency, we actually have zero phase shift because then we only have the resistor R here. And when we go even higher up in frequency, it becomes more um, positive 90, so it's become more inductive uh, phase shift. So this circuit behaves in the beginning as a capacitor in series with the resistor, because for low frequencies, the inductor is actually just a wire, so it's short circuit. So in the beginning, until we hit the resonance frequency, the, the capacitor dominates the circuit. And if we look to it, yeah, this one is an, actually an open circuit up to a point where it's um, conducting an AC circuit, AC current so that we can get the voltage drop over the resistor. And then for larger frequencies, the inductor starts to act as um, impedant, but then the capacitor is short circuit. And that's why we then get a more positive phase shift due to the inductive phase shift. So let's look at the resonance circuit as a band pass filter. Perhaps you remember back to the ideal filters that we actually have an ideal filter called a band pass filter that only pass a narrow band between two uh, specific frequencies, F low and F high. Uh, so when we turn this resonance circuit into a um, two-port network and the resonance, uh, sorry, the transfer function of the filter is V out or V in, we will actually see the, the relationship between the output voltage here, VR is then V out, and VS is the V in. So here we actually have V out over V in. We will see at again normalized frequency to the resonance frequency that at um, a Q of 10, we have some selectivity, but a, a Q of 100 makes it very selective around the resonance frequency. There are not many uh, frequencies that have a higher amplitude than at the resonance frequency. Let's look at the equations. Again, we have the overall um, impedance for the bandpass filter because it's just a, a serious resonance circuit. We have it here. And then how do we then translate it into um, a voltage over a voltage because here it's the impedance. So we have to find, use the current to find it. How do we find the current 
Yeah, this is the voltage divided by the impedance as written here. The phasor current is the source voltage phasor divided by the impedance of the circuit. And we have the impedance here of the circuit. We apply that in the equation. Then we have the source voltage divided by the R divided by what we have inside the bracket here. Then we want to have an expression for the output voltage. The output voltage is the voltage over the resistor. And that's, of course, the phasor current times the resistor. So that's this part here. We moved R out of the equation. And then we have now an expression for the output voltage. And we have here the input voltage. So Vr, the phasor Vr over the phasor Vs is actually V out over V in. So we have now the transfer function, and that's 1 over 1 plus JQS over F over the running frequency over the resonance frequency minus the resonance frequency over F. So now we have the transfer function of the thing. And we remember that QS can be either in rela relationship to the inductor, 2P, the resonance frequency times L divided by R, or uh, QS in case of the inductor, uh, sorry, the capacitor is 2P resonance frequency C and R. So we have now all the equation needed in order to um, tell us how um, to consider if we want a more selective filter with uh, the frequency very close to the, the resonance frequency, they are attenuated the most, and then only one frequency is uh, selected with a high amplitude. That's a high selective filter. Q S is then 100. A um, less um, significant filter, but Anyhow, good is QS is 10. Typically, we will operate between Q, uh, the quality factor for the series resonance circuit between 10 and 100. That's the typical values. When we consider um, this resonance circuit, we also have to consider the voltage over the inductor and the capacitor in this resonance circuit. Because of the large Q, the voltage magnitude over the inductance and the capacitance are the Q factor for the series times larger than the source voltage. So if I have a Q factor of 100, and my source here has a voltage of 1. My inductor voltage will be, in this direction of the phasor, be 100 volt. And the capacitor will be also 100 volt, but they will be in opposite phase, so they will actually cancel out. And I will have only the, the source voltage over the resistor. But we can have voltages as high as 100, depending on our source voltage at the resonance frequency. When we have uh, to uh, verify the circuit, is this a serious resonance circuit? Uh, we again apply, apply that um, for lower frequencies, the inductor acts as a, sh a short circuit because at DC level, this is just a wire. Um, and the uh, capacity impedance becomes smaller because of increasing frequency. 
uh, we actually get uh, a number of a current over the resistor and a slow rise in the voltage over the resistor. Uh, when we are on this side of the filter, we are up high in frequencies because F is bigger than the resonance frequency. The capacitor acts as a short circuit, but now the impedance of the inductor actually increase. So the current is limited and we get a decrease in the current over the in the resistor and therefore the voltage over the resistor will also decrease. This is how we can verify <coughs> that we actually have a band pass filter. When we talk um, band pass filters or band of frequencies, there's a definition we have to consider, and that's the band width. B is equal to the differences between the half power frequencies. <clears throat> Remember, the half power frequencies is where the output from the filter, in this case, is minus 3 dB or 1 over square root 2, that's equal to 0 0.707. So if I have an input voltage of 1, at the point where the output voltage from the filter is 0 0.707, I have the half power frequency or the minus 3 dB frequency. But I also have that on the high side of the frequency, and that's why we call it FH, the high side. This is the low side. The bandwidth is the difference between these frequencies. So the high frequency minus the low frequency, right here. Um, the bandwidth is also defined based on the resonance frequency and the series quality factor. So if we know the resonance frequency and divide it by the um, quality factor of the series resonance circuit, we can also find the bandwidth. Um, if we have a quality factor that's way bigger than one, typical 10 or more, we can make an approximation to the high frequency and the low frequency. They are actually the resonance frequency plus the half of the bandwidth. And the lower frequency is the resonance frequency minus half of the bandwidth. So these approximations are commonly used when we have um, the quality factor bigger than one, way bigger than one, so from about 10. Yes, thank you for watching.